I get to cover now one of my favorite laws of physics, the conservation of energy. This says that our energy of our system doesn't change unless something changes it. So stated here, the mechanical energy of a particle stays constant unless forces outside the system or non-conservative forces do work on it, in which case the change in the mechanical energy is equal to the work done by the non-conservative force. Or the work done by non-conservative forces are equal to our change in kinetic energy plus our change in potential energy. And that's equal to our total change in energy. I frequently prefer to think about it in terms of whatever energy I start with at some state A, any work I add to this from non-conservative forces ends me with whatever energy I end up with at state B. If you want to include kinetic and potential energies explicitly, we can say our kinetic energy at A plus our potential energy at A plus whatever non-conservative work that happens is equal to our kinetic energy at B plus our potential energy at B. So that's conservation of energy. That accounts for where all the energy goes. It either stays in the kinetic energy, potential energy, or leaves our system somehow. If we have no non-conservative forces, so no friction, no aerodynamic drag, then this becomes zero and we have conservation of mechanical energy. I'll emphasize though, that energy is conserved one way or the other. Even if mechanical energy as defined by kinetic and potential energies with gravitational and spring energies, even if the energy isn't there, it's going somewhere. It's not just disappearing. So conservation of energy is that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only change forms, which means it either stays in our system or it can leave our system via those non-conservative forces. When solving problems with conservation of energy, we first identify our bodies to be studied, identify the forces acting on the bodies, and then determine if we have non-conservative forces like friction. If so, we include this term. If not, you can leave it out. Then for every force that does work, choose some reference point. This will be like a y equals zero or your spring equilibrium position and determine the potential energy for that force. So if you have gravity that matters, set a y equals zero. If you have a spring that matters, set an equilibrium position. Finally, we apply the principle of mechanical energy conservation and set these things equal, including our non-conservative work if you need to, but that's our expression. That's conservation of energy. And with that, we can write an equation. We get one equation from this, but it's frequently enough to solve for whatever we're trying to solve for.